Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going to answer question number six from the June 2014 Statistics S1 paper from the International A Level IAL at Excel. This question here is about Venn diagrams and probability. And here we're given a Venn diagram which shows the probabilities of customers having various combinations of a starter, main course, or dessert at Polly's restaurant. So, of course, S stands for starter, M for main course, and D stands for um, dessert. So, these numbers are representing the probabilities, not the number of people, but the probabilities, of course. So, these are the probabilities of people choosing various combinations of uh, dishes, right? So, that's what these represent. The probability that person chooses, you know, those particular things are given here. There's two parts that are missing, P and Q. The probability of somebody choosing um, neither of these three, any of these three, is zero. So they all choose either a starter, a main course, or a dessert, or some combination of the three. No one chooses something outside of those. All right, now, given that the events S and D are statistically independent, we want to find the value of P. All right, so independent, very important word here in probability. And a lot of people um, make mistakes in this regard. And the other thing that's very important is somebody actually asked me a question just yesterday. Um, and I had answered a question about independent events and the events were like intersecting. And he says, how can these two events be independent if there's an intersection between them? And that shows he has misunderstood something. He has misunderstood or he has mixed up the word independent and the word mutually exclusive. Okay, independent and mutually exclusive, exclusive do not mean the same thing. So let me show you by way of an example. Okay, so I'll show you, I'll explain by just um, um, you know, two simple examples to give the difference between what's independent and mutually exclusive. And again, I'm going to go through this because I want to clear up misconceptions. I'm not a talking mark scheme, right? So if somebody is thinking, oh, get on with it, answer the question, I want to see the answer, just look at the mark scheme. See if you're right or wrong. I'm here to help people understand and clear up misconceptions. That's my main goal, right? So I might take a bit of time getting to the answer. That's because I want to stop off on the way and try to clear up some misconceptions that people might have to help those type of people, right? I'm not just a talking muck scheme. Now, as I was saying, so two events are mutually exclusive if they cannot occur at the same time. It's impossible for them both to occur at the same time. And they would be mutually exclusive. The Venn diagram would show there's no intersection between them. Okay, so for example, if we choose the numbers between 1 and 10, and I say set A is the, uh, the set of even numbers between 1 and 10, and set B are the set of odd numbers between 1 and 10. There's no way you can choose a one number which is both odd and even. If it's odd, it means if it's not odd, it's even. If it's not even, it's odd. Okay, there's no number which is both even and odd. So by picking one number from these from the numbers in that set of 1 to 10, there's no way you're going to get a number that satisfies both of these conditions of being odd and even. Right, so being odd and even are mutually exclusive events. Okay, mutually exclusive events. That's what mutually exclusive means. Independent is something different. So for example, with independent, a good way to explain independent events and dependent events is, for example, when you have a bag, okay, and you pick at random, you know, marbles from the bag. And some of them are like, uh, let's say, red, and some of them are blue. Okay, so supposing you have like uh, four blue marbles and five red marbles, right? So if you were to pick a marble from the bag, and then without looking, just randomly, yeah, and then put it back into the bag, then the second pick, the probabilities would still remain the same as the first pick. There's still the same number of marbles, the same number of each color. But if you would take a marble out of the bag, for example, if we took a marble out of the bag, right, and you didn't replace it back into the bag, then the second pick, well, the probability of what happens in the second pick depends on what happened in the first pick. Because, for example, if you took a red marble out of the bag the first pick, there's one less red marble in the bag. There's one less marble in the bag altogether. So the probability of picking a red in the second pick will be affected by what happens in the first pick. If it was a blue, the probability of picking a red second will be different. If it was a red, and so on. So, uh, you know, the, the second pick depends on the first pick, what happened in the first pick. This is called conditional probability. 
that's where we talk about independent events. So if there's two events, if you put the marble back in the bag, then the second pick is completely independent of the first pick. Okay, so there's an example of the difference between independent and dependent events. Okay, so, and mutually exclusive events. So that's the difference between mutually exclusive and independent. Events can be independent, okay, and there can be an intersection between, no problem. For example, here in this case, S and D are independent. What's S? S is choosing a starter. D is choosing, choosing a dessert. They're saying here that choosing a starter and choosing a dessert are independent. Okay, so... Uh, the, it, you know, it doesn't depend, somebody choosing a dessert doesn't depend, depend on them having chosen a starter. It doesn't affect, uh, the, the fact that their uh, choosing of a dessert is not affected by their choosing of a starter. That's what this basically means. They're independent of each other. And if two events are independent, then what we know, if they're independent, okay, so if I can say if S and D are independent, okay, then we know for sure that the probability of S times the probability of D is equal to the probability of the intersection between S and D. If they're independent, then this statement is true. If they're not independent, we cannot say this is true. That's the important thing to take away in this question. That's what this, how this will help us find the value of P. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to write down the probability of S and the probability of D and the probability of um, S intersection D. So the probability of S is all of these added together. That's 0 0.04, that's 0 0.14 plus 0 0.17, that's 0 0.31, so it's P plus 0 0.31. That's the probability of S. The probability of D is this whole circle here, which is, that's going to be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1, that's 0 0.2 plus 0 0.15, that's 0 0.35. And the probability of the intersection between S and D is this here, this intersection here, that's 0 0.14. Okay, so we have all we need here to set up an equation. The probability of S, so that's P plus P plus 0 0.31 multiplied by the probability of D, which is 0 0.35, is equal to the probability of S intersection D, which is 0 0.14. Okay, so now we can work out what P is. That's the only unknown. I can divide both sides by 0 0.35. So I have P plus 0 0.31 equals 0 0.14 divided by 0 0.35. Okay, and we can work out what that is, 0. Point, um, sorry, the other way around, 0. 0.14 over, um, over 0. 0.35, that gives us 2 fifths, which is 0. 0.4. Okay, so that's uh, P plus 0. 0.31, so in fact, I'll, I'll write it like this. So P plus 0. 0.31 equals 0. 0.4. So P is equal to 0 0.4 minus 0 0.31. Okay, let's get rid of that bit. So that's going to be 0 0.09. So P equals 0 0.09. Okay, just to confirm that. So you're going to have um, minus 0 0.31, 0 0.09. That's right. Okay, so that's the value of P. Okay, so we know that this is now 0 0.09. And then they say part B, so that's P. It says, hence, find the value of Q. Well, I know that the total probability, this, these all represent probabilities of different events, the, the total probability in the whole situation is equal to, the sum is 1. So all of these have to add up to 1. Okay, this outside is 0. So all of these in these three circles must add up to 1. So we already know the probability of all of D. We worked that out. That was 0 0.35. So I can say that 0 0.35 plus, then I've got what's left of these so I've got 0 0.09 plus 0 0.17, because I've already counted all of this circle, plus Q, all of that has to equal 1. So we have 0. Point, if we add these together, 0 0.35, so we get this, plus 0 0.35 plus 0 0.17. That gives us 0 0.61. So we have 0 0.61 plus Q equals 1. So Q is equal to 1 minus 0 0.61. That would be 0 0.4, 0 0.39. Q is equal to 0 0.39. Let's just make sure of that. 1 minus the answer. Yeah, 0 0.39. So that's Q. 0 0.39. So now we found P and Q. We filled in all the numbers in the Venn diagram. All right, now for part C. Okay, we've got the numbers already filled in for P and Q. 
Now it says find the probability of D slash M intersection S. Now what does that mean? Well, when you have when you have this slash, it means the probability that you choose D given that you're only picking from M intersection S. That is your sample space. So what I'd like to do here in a question like this is I like to take the highlighter and highlight the section after the slash. M intersection S is just this section here between M and S. It's the intersection between them. So this area here, that's my sample space. I can only choose from here. So for part one, we can say the probability that you've got D slash M intersection S is going to be the sample space is going to be these two added together, which is 0 0.27. That's my denominator. And the numerator is going to be just how much of D is in that. Okay, so D is all this circle, but the only part of D which is in the highlighted area is 0 0.1. So it's 0 0.10 over 0 0.27, which is 10 over 27 as a you know, um, simplified fraction. I don't think, I think it will give us a decimal, which will leave it as 10 over 27. That's fine. That's good. That's the answer. So there's the answer for C part one. All right. So the probability of something giving something else after slash is what you put as your sample space. So for example, let's look at part two. Here, our sample space is M intersection S complement. So I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. And now I'm going to color in. M intersection S complement. So M intersection S complement means it has to be in M, but it can't be in S. M intersection S complement. So it must be outside of S, but it must be inside of M. So it's basically going to be this area over here. Everything inside M apart from the S part. So you've got to get rid of the S part from it. Okay, so you've got to get rid of this S part from it. So it's all of this. Okay, it's this crescent shape basically. That's our sample space. We can only choose from that area here. We can't choose from anywhere else. So we got to find the probability that you're going to choose something from D given M intersection S complement. All right, so the only part of D that you find in the highlighted area is this 0 0.15. So it's going to be 0 0.15 over the sum of these two is going to be 0 0.39, that's 0 0.49, 0 0.54. So you're going to have 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.54. I think that simplifies to 5 over 18. That's 5 over 18. And there we have those two probabilities. Okay, so here there's no context in the way they've asked the question, but we know what the context is. This means uh, dessert. This means main course. This means um, starter. So basically this is the probability that someone chose the dessert given that they had a main course and a starter. And this is the, the probability that someone chose the dessert given that they had a main course and no starter, without a starter. They had a main course but no starter. That's what this basically means. So now for part D, it says, One evening, 63 customers are booked into Polly's restaurant for an office party. Polly has asked for their starter and main course orders before they arrive. Of these 63 customers, 27 ordered a main course and a starter. Okay, so that's a main course and a starter. That that looks like this, doesn't it? Main course and starter, okay. And 36 ordered a main course without a starter. Main course and no starter, which again looks like this one. All right, so estimate the number of desserts that these 63 customers will have. All right, so this is very, very much linked to the part C because basically they're asking us estimate the number of people that chose desserts given that they had a main course and a starter as well as those who chose desserts given that they had a main course and no starter so basically we we know that for these 27 customers okay that's the probability that they chose a dessert and now for these 36 customers the ones that chose a main course and no starter that's the probability that they will choose a dessert okay so we can basically just multiply 27 by 10 over 27 that will give us the number of people who got a dessert given that they had a main st main course starter and 5 over 18 times 36 will be the number of people who ordered um, a dessert given that they had a main course without a starter okay so basically this kind of sets us up this part c sets us up for part d so i just have to do 27 times 10 over 27 27 times 10 over 27 and see the numbers work out very nicely here 
plus, and I've got 36 times. And I think that was 5 over 18. Yes, 5 over 18. And again, the numbers, they kind of stack up nicely here. This, this 27 cancels out, so that's 10. So you end up with 10 plus, and this, that becomes 2 and 1. So again, 10 plus 10, that's 20. So we can say that the desserts, the number of desserts will be 20 desserts. 20 desserts. And there's the answer to part D of this question, which concludes this question. Question number six from the June 2014 International A-Level Edexcel Statistics S1 paper. Other questions from this paper um, that I have answered so far will be in the playlist over here. If you wish me to answer any questions that I have, haven't answered so far from here, you just request it on the, on the channel in the comment section. Um, if you want to see questions I've answered about probability from S1 in um, International A level edX or S1, you can find the playlist for that in this uh, playlist. The, the link will be over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the banner that will appear at this region. And you can watch the video, the link for which you will see at the top here, which will show you how to use my channel in an efficient manner to find what you need. Thank you for watching and see you soon.